good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So first of all, I'd like to uh, thank organizers for inviting me here to give this uh, talk. So uh, I will be talking about the, give you an overview about the science and the technology uh, in China and uh, followed by a roadmap of uh, science, technology and innovation, uh, what we are doing. Now I'll give you a brief introduction about the Chinese Academy of Sciences, where I uh, come from as a president of the academy, and finally give uh, the conclusion. So, uh, okay. So, so uh, after the more than 60 years, uh, China has set up a complete design, technology, and innovation system with a few fields ranking at the top of the world, such as uh, China has the world second largest R&D workforce with a total R&D expenditure about 1.8 of the percent of the GDP. So uh, as uh, the second largest economy with a diversified development, China allows enough room to try uh, all kinds of science, technology, innovation. And uh, we have reached the stage uh, we can uh, rely on uh, more about on the science technology contributions, innovation, and the skills of the workforce for the further progress. So this figure shows you uh, the China's R&D workforce, which uh, was ranked number two in the 2009, with a total about 2.29 million. So uh, United States also is the first one, so we are second one. But we should notice that in terms of the R&D personnel per 1,000 labor force, uh, we are still the lower, just about 29, compared to the other developed country, countries. But, I mean, in the, the total number, we are the number two. Uh, this figure shows you uh, China's R&D investment uh, the, became the second largest in the world in the uh, year 2009, uh, taking up 12% of the global total. So, uh, also, you can see from this figure the, the China's uh, R&D growth rate uh, remains around 20% annually in the past 10 years, being the highest in the world. So, so uh, you can see from the lens, uh, this is uh, European Union, uh, this uh, the Japan, this United States, this South Korea, but here is uh, China. So growth rate, uh, rate is uh, very fast in the past 10 years from the 1996 to the 2009. Yeah, but we know that there's still uh, a big gap in the percentage. So we suggest that the government uh, still to increase, uh, you know, the R&D in the uh, coming years. The China's R&D investment for the business sector uh, is uh, being the third highest among the world's the major countries in the proportion. So from business sector, we have about 73. Uh, Percent and from uh, the government about 18 more than 18 percent, yeah, is uh, the, the third highest among the world's uh, major countries. So, the the, the international science uh, and technology publication is other indicator about uh, the country's uh, innovation. So. Uh, China's uh, the scientific publications uh, in the 2009 uh, have uh, increased rapidly. Uh, uh, this uh, became number two in total. So also from this figure, you can see uh, the red line represents, represents uh, the publications by Chinese scientists. Uh, the black one is represented the, the, by the Japanese scientists. The green one uh, is the rest of the world. 
they say United States, they say uh, uh, the, the, all the, the European countries. Uh, so we see in terms of the single uh, individual country, the China's uh, international science technology publication is ranked number two in the 2009. So uh, not only uh, uh, the, the, the number of the publications, I think the quality of the publication is an important factor yeah, for the science, uh, scientific innovation. So uh, uh, we also witness the rapid increase uh, the, the, the quality of the publication in the past few years. So when we're talking about the, the publication in the Nature, Science, JAX, and the PRL, and so on. So the number of the publications with a higher impact journals uh, is also increasing in the past years. Here, show you uh, the, the, the publication as uh, the more specified journals such as JAX and the PRL. You know, JAX is uh, the highest uh, impact, impact journal in the chemistry. PRL is the highest impact journal in the physics. So also uh, the, the percentage, uh, the paper published in the comprehensive journals such as Nature and Science also increased in the past years from just about 0.6% to the uh, 2%, but it's still low, but I think growth rate is uh, uh, well, very fast. Okay, so this figure shows you what China's invention patterns, you know patterns is an important indicator of our innovation. So China became number three in the 2009, but we know that we, this number is still far behind the Japan and the United States, but we, I think this number is a growth also quite quite fast in the uh, uh, past years. China has uh, accomplished a great deal in the wide range of the range of the science, technology, and the innovation. So this is successes across uh, frontiers of science, areas for social benefits and sustainability, and industrial competitiveness, and national security. Uh, none of te science technology is uh, such of the good case. So uh, I show you some uh, the uh, recent uh, progress in this field. So uh, the importance of the nano science technology uh, has been recognized by Chinese government in the uh, early 1980s. The government sectors uh, invest money on the uh, nano science technology from very early stage. Uh, so even the recent years, I mean in the year 2006, the government issued the guideline for uh, the long and middle term of the science technology development program. So from 19, the, from 2006 to uh, 2020. So nanoscience technology uh, was at least as an important item in this uh, the program. So government invest more money on this in the basic science area, including nanoscience technology, quantum modulation, and the developmental biology, and the other things. So uh, in the past years, uh, we have uh, established some new uh, the research institutes, such as a uh, national uh, center for nanoscience technology, which was established in the year 2002 in Beijing, and there are other in research institutes uh, established by our academy. The publications and patents in the field of nanoscience technology also increasing in the uh, past years. Uh, so uh, according to uh, statistics, uh, in the year 2010, so the SCI and EI publications in the nanoscience technology, uh, China became the number one in the world. Uh, China has made a success both on the basic research and application uh, in the, this field. So I show you uh, this uh, the example 
uh, the Institute of the Metal Research of the China Academy of Sciences, which is located in Shenyang, and also part of China. There are several groups working on the nano uh, uh, materials, especially on the nano uh, metal materials. So uh, the, the one group had by uh, Professor Lu, uh, who uh, this group published a series of papers in the very high impact journals such as Science and the other the journals uh, studied about the uh, the superplastic uh, intensibility of uh, the the the, carb, the nano nano crystalline uh, materials uh, the super copper. You can see here this uh, nano copper uh, like this, which uh, can be uh, elongated to more than uh, 50 times from here to here, without breaking breaking in the room temperature, just due to the nano structures in these uh, metal uh, materials. So, so this feature uh, is uh, very useful for advancing a processing technology of the metal and alloy. So. Uh, uh, nano structure copper. I, I think that this unique behavior demonstrates that uh, the nano crystalline structure significantly uh, facilitates plastic deformation uh, and uh, at a low uh, temp at a very low temperature. The other uh, example I want to show you is uh, the nano. We call it the nano materials being used to the uh, the green printing technology. So currently, there are two technologies being used in the world of our printing technical. Uh, you can see there, one is uh, the laser photo setting, uh, pho photo processing system, we call it the LPIs uh, technical. The other one is a CTP. So for this technical, we need to input the picture and the text information to computer, then to uh, get the laser uh, phototyping setting uh, machine, then get the uh, to uh, produce the photosensitive film. Then this film had to be a uh, the uh, has to be a uh, processor to develop to fix. Treatment by the chemical, uh, you know, treatment process. Then the, they need to two steps of the chemical treatments. Then get the plate, which can be used to produce newspapers, magazines, and so on. The third technical you call the CTP technical. They just use one step of the chemical treatment. But anyhow, this technical problem is that this uh, photo uh, graphic imaging we need to process in the darkness. More importantly is that those technicals need the chemical development cause the liquid waste discharge, uh, get the pollution. And uh, we need a pro coating and the waste resources like the sewer uh, materials. So Institute of Chemistry, China Academy of Sciences developed a new technical for this uh, printing. So we use a plate just uh, uh, we uh, input the picture and the text information to the computer, then get printing plate. So using uh, nano materials, so we we don't no need to avoid light, no pollution, low cost and uh, recoverable. With, without any uh, the the you know we don't use the you know the chemical treatments anymore. So these are uh, the we use the nanoparticle uh, nanomaterials, your special designed nanoparticle to do that covered by polymer layer and uh, we are doing some uh, surface modification to uh, get to uh, produce this uh, the plate for uh, printing. So here I show you uh, some samples produced newspapers, magazines, even the color calendar uh, produced by this new technical. This uh, completely uh, the in new technical innovation uh, is uh, quite uh, different from the, the currently technical being widely used in the world for the time being. 
we have set up the company to uh, produce this uh, machine, this technical, to the, uh, uh, the industry. Okay, so now I'll give you a free word, few words about the roadmap of science, technology, uh, innovation. Uh, we have issued uh, the National Science and Technology Outline from 2006 to uh, year 2020. This outline was worked out in the 2006, involving uh, contributions of the, our 3,000 individuals, including uh, scientists, engineers, the, the, some uh, individuals from the industry, and even from administrative uh, staffs. So this outline aims to turn China into an innovation-driven country and a well-off society through fostering strategic imaging industries. So its specific goals include further build up our national innovation system, focus stronger linkage between science, technology, and industries, make enterprises to be main players in R&D, and innovations, improve science technology contributions to economy up to 60% from currently 40%, and increase R&D expenditure up to 2.5% of GDP. Right now, uh, it's about 1.7, something like that. And uh, establish Chinese modern research uh, system. So the national priorities specified by these uh, guidelines the, I mean, the main main areas include energy, agriculture, environment, uh, transportation, uh, pollution control, popul population and health, uh, uh, manufacturing industry, information industry, and the modern service industry, water and the mineral resources, uh, urbanization and city development, uh, national safety and public security, something like that to achieve the innovation and the faculty development and provide strong support uh, for the future. So government initiated 16 major national special, special projects to uh, carry out uh, the, the implement, implementation. So, so China has issued various supporting policies and measures to support the implementation of the outland, such as the financial uh, taxation policies, policies enhanced IP strategy and standards, efforts to optimize funding structure, efforts to promote a diversified system of science and technology investment, initiatives to expand both international and domestic science technology cooperation. So our basic approach is to adopt whatever policy and initiatives needed that are not in the practice. We need to improve our ecosystem as China actually uh, introduced the innovation concept from the West. So the science technology development outline in the 12th five year plan that is from uh, the last year to uh, 2015. So there is a national science technology outline and also uh, the science tech development plans for a specific area of the of other, other agencies. We have different uh, the policies and the measures uh, to do that. Yeah. So the eight, uh, eight major tasks in the 12 five years plan uh, aim to uh, cultivate and develop the strategic new industries, achieve breakthroughs in key uh, industrial technologies, achieve uh, breakthroughs in key techs for people's livelihood, and implement national key special science technology projects, uh, and build up the science technology innovation basis and the platforms for all the scientists and engineers in China, not only from our academy, and also from the uh, universities. And also we want to train more innovative talents for the young generation, young people, improve innovation uh, the system uh, in China. Okay. So 
uh, now I want to uh, give you uh, some uh, 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 brief uh, introduction about our academy. Uh, the Chinese Academy of Sciences was founded on the uh, November 1st, 1949, more than uh, 60 years already. Uh, the, the foundation just one month after the founding of the People's Republic of China. Actually, our academy is uh, the integrated body uh, with uh, three major uh, functions. One is, uh, uh, is a national team uh, representing uh, the scientific standard in China. Uh, we have more than 100 research institutes uh, discovered and uh, located at a different part of China. The research area almost cover all the disciplinaries of the uh, science and technology. Uh, okay, we, we also we have two universities. Uh, so the total staff of our academy is about 58,000. We have 47,000 uh, graduate students. Uh, more than 90% of uh, mega science facilities in China are uh, initiated, uh, constructed, uh, running uh, by our academy. Uh, also, we have uh, 22 uh, shareholding companies. One is uh, Lenovo, the computer PC company, maybe you know that. It's also founded by our academy. So, uh, uh, because time is limited, I just have to uh, very quick to uh, pass. Uh, uh, we uh, attached greater attention on the uh, the, the the science uh, uh, the scientific international cooperation. So we always uh, uh, we formed various forms and cans, uh, such as we joined joined projects, joined the labs, joined the centers, joined the institutes. For example, we have set up the uh, academy uh, and Max Planck. A partner institute on computational biology, and uh, with uh, uh, Ch the Chinese Academy of Sciences, with the Pasteur Institute, and what in the Shanghai, and with uh, Australia, and uh, with the uh, United States, we have uh, other, you know, uh, with the Kavli Institute, set up Kavli Institute for uh, theoretical physics and astronomy. Uh, so, in the uh, nautical countries, we. Uh, uh, have organized several uh, the, the forum, such as uh, Kai's Nautical Forum on uh, Strategies for Scientific Cooperation in Beijing and even in Lund, uh, Sweden. And in the, uh, the Academy of Finland, we have workshop uh, on the climate change and uh, join the call for proposals in the field of climate and the environment. And there, the six uh, projects selected already uh, between the Research Council of Norway and the uh, CIS. So even in the Denmark, we have set up the Sino Danish Center for Education and Research. So the partners in the Denmark side is eight Danish universities and the Danish Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation with the Great University of our Academy. We're promoting and strengthening the collaboration between Danish and the Chinese research and the learning institutions and the joint training of PhD and master students. This year we have uh, uh, the total of more than 100 the joint training the graduate students to, will be in, in China for studying for one or two years. So, so tomorrow, yesterday I visited uh, Novo Nautics. Uh, I, we have a collaboration with Novo Nautics uh, to set up a research fun, uh, foundation to set up the Great Wall pro uh, Professorship. And recently, our academy awarded uh, for international scientific cooperation last year to a Professor Fleming Bensenbacher. Uh, this is the highest uh, award for uh, uh, the, the international cooperation. So we would like to uh, strengthen the cooperation with the European countries on many priority areas, such as a joint call for projects, personnel exchange, postgraduate students are training, establish and maintain strategic dialogue mechanism for uh, identification of the priority areas and uh, hot topics of common interests 
for addressing our global and regional challenges, set up the cooperative research program or projects uh, based on scientific group, uh, joint uh, centers, and the laboratory, and so on. So some thoughts on the further cooperation I want to propose uh, is to uh, initiate uh, interactive exchange program for PhD students and young scientists to hold a uh, multilateral uh, frontiers of science workshops and uh, conduct joint in big science facility uh, based on interdisciplinary research and uh, combine bottom up and top down two mechanisms for both sides to push forward uh, the practical uh, cooperation. And uh, the scientists from uh, European Union countries are welcome to visit and work in the China Academy of Sciences uh, through uh, uh, KAI's visiting professorship program for senior international scientists and for, uh, from the fellowship program for young uh, international scientists. We have launched these two programs uh, uh, two years ago, so supporting uh, many uh, young scientists working in our academy. We cover all the expenses uh, in, 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 in when they work in China. So because time limit, I think I have to... Uh, two minutes. Two minutes? Oh, okay, go. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, I think we are, uh, although we have achieved uh, some uh, progress in the science, technology, uh, development in China in the past 10 years, but we still uh, facing, uh, you know, a lot of problems or uh, challenges. So uh, uh, much more needs uh, to be done to make our science, technology, innovation system more effective. For example, in the basic science, uh, there's no much scientific Chinese contributions or lack of internationally recognized uh, Chinese scientists. In the high-tech area, uh, and, uh, our dependency on cool technologies from overseas in a wide range of the area. In the industrialization, the China's science technology contribution ratio to economic growth is less than 40 percent in the year 2006, where US, Japan, Korea more than 70 percent in 2006. Uh, and tuberculosis are far from being the backbone of the R&D and the innovation in spite of huge pushing so we, in order to make the made in China to the made and created by China, so we must rely on the science, technology, innovation to transform our mode of the economic uh, development and achieve uh, the sustainable development. Also needed to green our industrialization, urbanization, uh, lifestyles, and the trade model. Uh, a knowledge-based economy is a must. Uh, for China. So in conclusion, so to accelerate the transformation of the mode of economic development is a key strategic task of the whole nation for our construction of the resource uh, efficient and environmental friendly society. And must rely on the scientific knowledge and the innovations to achieve all these as required by China's con conditions and the world reality. And the further enhanced science knowledge and innovation will guarantee China to take advantage of various science technology progress for the benefits of China and the world. So uh, the innovation can only best occur with uh, active international cooperation as uh, it is uh, effective means to utilize global science technology progress, wisdom and innovative resources. So international cooperation is a strongly uh, uh, complementary to each other as uh, each has advantages. An enhanced partnership between uh, countries in science technology and innovation will surely lead us to bright and uh, forever bright futures. Okay, so uh, let's say thank you very much for your attention.